Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are talking about Cinema 4D. Why are we talking about Cinema 4D? Well, there are a couple of reasons. First off, SIGGRAPH is going on right now. This is an annual uh, graphics um, trade meet or a conference that is probably the biggest in the graphics world, and so we get all kinds of announcements, and Cinema 4D made just one of those announcements. They announced that R21 is being released. Now, normally at this point, I would jump in and show you what I could about the application in action, but I'm not doing that for two reasons. First off, I don't know how to use Cinema 4D. I would do a really brutal job of demonstrating it. And second, it's because it's not actually out yet. It's not coming until September. But what they have done is announced both the new features that are coming in R21, and more importantly and more interesting to me, the new pricing. Because one of those things about Cinema 4D that I have always noticed is their product structure and pricing have always been very, very confusing. This is a program that costs either a thousand bucks or 5,000 bucks. And what's the difference between versions? Can't figure it out. Never knew, never could. So we're gonna look at that. They've streamlined their product offerings. They've offered new subscription offerings that are quite a bit cheaper and more accessible to the masses. And they've um, just kind of clarified things. And again, we're also going to quickly look at what is new in the R21 release coming in September. But I'm gonna gloss over that mostly because I will come back to that when it is actually released. Mostly I wanna talk about the new licensing and pricing options that they have created. The first way to really kind of explain this though is to start with the existing structure and you're gonna see why it's a little confusing so R20 the current version of Cinema 4D you've got Cinema 4D Prime release you've got broadcast you've got 4D visualize 4D studio uh, body paint 3D and uh, Cinema 4D upgrade versions and on and on it goes. And then we've got multi-licensing versions. We got a competitive side grade version. Um, yeah, so Cinema 4D has always had a very confusing kind of structure. So you've got Cinema 4D Prime, kind of your entry level version at a thousand bucks US. And then you've got, you know, specialized versions for broadcast, so visualized, and then you've got studio. So what's the difference between studio and prime? I don't know. I think it's more of these, but basically, as you can see right here, the structure of uh, Cinema 4D has been a little confusing. And as you can see from the pricing, it goes from, okay, that's kind of in the same level as Modo for pricing, up to, okay, that's in the same level as Max and Maya for pricing. And if you're a Blender user, you're just probably bleeding from your eyeballs looking at these price lists. Well, this is one of those things they just addressed at SIGGRAPH. So they are structuring it. So now on, there is one version of Cinema 4D. There's no more of this studio visualize, uh, broadcast, body paint stuff. There is just Cinema 4D. And there are now um, subscription-based licensing. So what we've got now is the 365 version. So this is uh, sorry, unfortunately the pricing is all in Euro, which is probably pretty close to USD. So you got an idea of exactly what you're dealing with. Uh, but what you've got is annual subscription. You get Cinema 4D, their training stuff, team render, and that is 60, say 60 bucks a month, um, build annually. And then we've got monthly subscription, single user 30. Okay. So that's annual building. This is monthly billing at a hundred bucks. And then you've got 30 monthly subscription with Redshift for 130, and then flat out you can purchase it for 3,500 or 3,500 euro. So we're looking at the full license for everything. Well, they got rid of everything, so they've got just one version, but they also went with the pricing for just one version. So essentially, what R21 is saying here is, okay, we've we've simplified all of our pricing and structures because we got rid of all the cheap versions. So this is kind of a double-edged sword here. On the perpetual license, it's the exact same price as the most expensive version. Now, the biggest alternative is you never used to have this option here. So you're looking at like six or seven hundred dollars a year for licensing so if you you know upgrade it on an annual basis cinema 4d r21 is a whole lot cheaper but if you previously were purchasing at um studio level and what you got was good for you uh in essence this is going to triple the price so this is not necessarily all good news depending on how you buy things if you like to buy your software outright versus if you like subscribing to it if you like subscribing to it this is great news if you buy it outright it actually just kind of got a whole lot worse for the most part. So anyways, that is the new pricing structure of Cinema 4D R21. And I'm curious to hear, especially if you are a Cinema 4D user, what you think of these changes. Now these are being sold as basically all positives. But when you look again at Perpetual, 
I don't really see that as a positive. Although, of course, this is definitely a positive, but I've never really been a huge subscription fan personally. So I'm curious to hear what you guys think of the pricing. I know we're going to get the obvious. Why not use Blender? Blender is free. There's a reason why all of this different software exists. People like their software. Let's leave that for a different argument. But if you are looking at this sort of software, which license kind of leans towards you? And are you like me? This is kind of like... I don't know, uh, taking away options in some way for people that want to buy software outright. Anyways, I'd love to hear your opinion on the new licensing structure. Now, on top of that, let's go back and look really quickly at what is actually new in this release. So, of course, I will link to the, the release notes um, in the linked article down below. But what you can see here, first off, they talk about there is now only one version. And basically, it's the most expensive one. Uh, but yeah. So no more separate versions. The licensing has been streamlined. You've got a trial automatic of 14 days when you sign up on the first time. So if you do want to check all this out, once R21 is released, you can check it out for 14 days completely free for the full on version. Uh, we've got improvements to the exchange functionality. We've got a number of different CAD file ports supported, including SOLIDWORKS, STEP, CATIA, IGIS, and JT formats. If those don't sound familiar to you, those are mostly from uh, the engineering world. A lot of those are like solid drawing kind of applications for, you know, where if you are designing a widget or a project for manufacturing, these are the programs you generally would use. On top of that, we've got in the modeling world, caps and bevels support added, volume builder, volume measure improvements, uh, modeling core got some uh, improvements across the board here, uh, UV editor enhancements. Again, I'm just scanning over this for the most part because I will actually come back to this when R21 is actually released. I'll spend some time with it and get a closer look at it. Uh, so we've got material improvements, denoiser, everything is getting Intel or um, NVIDIA Optics denoiser support these days, it seems, and uh, they are as well. Uh, node interface improvements, we've got uh, uh, physical render node improvements or additions, uh, like a line node, spline mapper node, multi-trace ray node, cell nodes, 2D nodes, uh, pro render uh, improvements, uh, workflow improvements, interface enhancements, support for high DPI monitors on Windows. This one is an absolute must, and I love seeing this in there, and I'm actually kind of amazed that in 2019 we are still struggling with high DPI monitors in the Windows land. This is one of those areas where Mac OS really kicked our butts. But hey, same thing here. You got Retina, their version of it as well. So that is nice to see. If you're working on a high-res monitor, you're going to enjoy using Cinema 4D much more after those. Improved interface speed, um, light and dark schemes been modernized. Um, yeah, so we kind of keep going, keep going. We got improvements in um, force field object was added, dynamic and particle uh Advection, influence the velocity of particles and dynamic objects with fields, uh, field interface enhancements, character animations improved, weighting algorithm, workflow improvements, uh, Mixamo control rig was added, um, and then SDK and, and coding and a number of program, um, improvements on that side of things. So again, I'm skimming over this pretty hardcore because again, this, this actually isn't out yet. This is the stuff that is going to be coming in release 21 when it is released in September. So that is the announcement. That is Cinema 4D R21. Biggest thing there, of course, is that new licensing and new pricing options. I am really curious to hear what you guys think of that. Is, is it... Um, is it an improvement to be offering those cheap, more accessible entry level um, contracts or oh, sorry, subscription? Or is it kind of a gotcha that's kind of their way of taking away options from people that want to purchase a perpetual license? Because that's kind of what I'm seeing. I'm seeing it, it, it's more advantageous if you want to go to subscriptions and you're basically getting the um, full fat pro ver version that you used to spend 3,700 bucks on for instead like about 600 bucks a year. And if you upgrade every, let's say, what would that be, five years, it's a, it's a savings. And everyone upgrades their application within five years for the most part. So if you move to a subscription model, this is definitely a great deal. But if you're working with a perpetual license, it doesn't seem like such a great deal. It basically says, if you want perpetual, you got to buy the best and for the price that the best currently is right now. Um, whereas before, you used to be able to buy an entry-level version for uh, just under a thousand bucks. So I, I'd be interested to hear how many people are irritated by that or happy about this, where you fall on that whole subscription versus perpetual is probably going to bias your opinion, but that is it. So that is Cinema 4D R21 coming in September, uh, but those are the new details there. And if you're interested, they have a sign up if you want to learn more or be notified when it ships. Okay, uh, please keep the comment section as clean as possible, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.